Hello, this is the first in a series of three videos on running many models within R. In this video, we're going to look at how to create a grid of specifications for the different models that we want to run. We're going to be using the tidyverse package to do this. The tidyverse package is actually a package of packages. It includes several popular packages such as dplyr and ggplot2. But the tidyverse is also a design philosophy. As a result, the packages within the tidyverse share common features and they work very well together. If you don't know much about the tidyverse, I've included some links to resources with this tutorial. I've also created a worksheet which you can work through alongside these videos. The worksheet includes fully annotated code. Let's quickly load the tidyverse package into R using the library tidyverse command. If you've not already installed it, you'll have to install this prior to using the library tidyverse command. We're going to be using a simulated data set in this tutorial. The data set contains data from four pretend cohort studies representing four generations, baby boomers, Gen X, millennials, and Gen Z. I'm just going to download this data from the internet, loading it into R and assigning it to the name DF. I've put the data on the OSF so you can download it yourself. This data set contains repeat measurements of BMI at each decadal sweep in each of the four studies. Now you'll notice I've used the pipe operator here, which is used extensively within the tidyverse. Uh, it allows you to chain commands together and it can be read, do this, then this. So here we've taken the URL and then we've piped it into the read RDS command to download that data set, which is an RDS format. Uh, into R and assigned it to the variable df. Let's have a quick look at df using the structure function str. Here we see that df is a tibble uh, with the dimensions 80,000 by 11. A tibble is a type of data frame which is a rectangular uh, data structure like a spreadsheet or a data set in Stata. It has uh, rows which are observations and columns which are variables. Uh, DF is a long format data set where each individual has a measurement of BMI for each follow-up that the survey was run for. So for instance for the baby boomers we've got observations for each obs uh, cohort member from follow-ups at age 15 to 65. We're going to be using this data set to examine the association between cognitive ability and later BMI. Let's have a quick look at the raw data um, sampling 20 observations at random using the sample n function. So let's just make this a bit bigger. Okay, you'll see that the 11 variables are cohort ID and we've got FUP which is the age of follow-up so 15 to 65 for baby boomers. Uh, we've got age which is the age of BMI measurement BMI, which is the BMI. Then we have three measures of cognitive ability. Uh, we've got non-verbal ability, verbal ability, and vocabulary. We also, each of these, by the way, was measured in adolescence. We also have three further variables uh, that we we'll use as control variables in our regression models. So one is an indicator for whether the person is female, a one or a zero. Then we've got two that aren't printed to the console family class, which says whether someone was from a non-manual or a manual uh, socioeconomic background. And then uh, childhood BMI, which was measured prior to the measure of cognitive ability. Now the current data are perfect for adopting a many model approach. We have data from four different cohorts, each of which measures BMI at multiple different ages. And we also have three different ways of measuring cognitive ability. Now the field of cognitive epidemiology has found widespread associations between cognitive ability and multiple measures of health. Dominant theories in the field would predict that cognitive ability should have a causal effect on BMI and predicts that an association between the two should be seen regardless of the age of follow-up, the year one was born, or the measure of cognitive ability that was used. It is therefore worth running a many models approach with combinations of cohort, age of follow-up, and measure of cognitive ability to examine how robust associations are. These theories would also predict that we should find an association regardless of whether we control for childhood BMI or not. 
so we'll add this to our analysis too. Our specification grid will contain all the information we need to run a particular model, that is, the specific cohort and follow up the data to, uh, to take the data from, the particular set of control variables to use, and the particular measure of cognitive ability to examine associations with BMI using. We'll first create a few objects that we're going to use to construct the specification grid. First, we're going to create a list uh, that contains the sets of control variables. This list will have two elements. One will just define a basic model with controls for age, sex, and family class. And the second will add a further control for childhood BMI. So let's just write that out now. Copy and paste this across. So the basic model just has those three covariates and the second one will have those three covariates plus uh, child BMI. And we've called these models basic and child underscore BMI. Let's just quickly run that and save it to uh, name uh, mod code bars. Okay, and then we can just look what mod code bars look like. So it's a list with two elements, basic and child BMI, that just creates uh, contains those strings. So mod covars is a list and we can access elements of mod covars using the double square bracket notation and putting within those square brackets the name of the element we want to pick out. So if we want to get the set of variables for the basic model we can just write basic in quotation marks within the double brackets and that will get us back to the string. So here we go. This is the sort of code we'll be using later to construct our models. Next, we want to get the set of cognitive ability variables. Uh, we'll use the str subject uh, function to subset the names of df, the column names of df, uh, to those beginning with cog, because we named all of our cognitive ability variables to uh, cog underscore, and then something after that. So the syntax is str subject, then the string uh, that we want to subset. In this case, it's the names, the column names from df. And then we're just using a regular expression uh, this tilde sign says any uh, give us back any string that contains sorry that starts with cog underscore so we get back cog nonverbal cog verbal and cog vocab let's just save this as cog vars okay so as mentioned we want to run separate models for each cognitive ability measure each set of control variables and each cohort and follow up the cohorts differ in the set of follow-ups used to measure BMI, so we're going to be using the distinct function from the time diverse to get the uh, combinations of cohort and FUP that are actually observed in the DF data frame. So DF, pipe this into distinct, and then we just name the columns that we want to get the distinct values of. So we return back a table of 16 rows, which has the different um, combinations of cohort and foot that are observed in the data set. So we have the years 15 to 65 for baby boomers, 15 to 55 for Gen X, 15 to 35 for millennials, and 15 to 25 for Gen Z. This is just two of the things that we want to loop over. We also want to add two new variables for COGVAR and the covariates that we're going to use. Um, so to combine that information in, to get the full set of specifications, we're gonna use the expand grid function, which will just produce a table with all the combinations of the inputs that have been provided to it. So we can pipe this distinct, uh, re the result from distinct straight into um, expand grid. Then we'll just add cogvar equals cogvars and covars equals names of mod covars. And now we get back a tibble that is 96 rows long. We've got each combination of cohort, FUP, COGVAR. You can see we've got COG nonverbal, COG verbal, and COG, var, uh, COG vocab. And then we've also got each combination of COVARs as well. So basic and child BMI. Okay, so uh, now we have these 60, 96 rows. We can see that, for instance, the first row would be uh, specify a model uh, using data at age 15 for baby boomers where cognitive ability is measured using the nonverbal um, measure of cognitive ability and the covariates that we use are just from the basic model. In the second model we would use uh, the co same 
data, same measure of cognitive ability, but we would be adding covariance for child BMI as well. Before saving this uh, specification grid to an object, I just want to do one last thing, which is to create a new column to identify each row, and we're going to call this new column spec ID. This will just be equal to the row number, so one for the first row, two for the second, and so on. There we go. We're going to use this spec ID to pass it to a generic function that allows us to select a row. We'll do this rather than pass all the information from the other four columns in separate arguments, uh, which can get cumbersome. Let's just save that to mod specs. And then just quickly check mod specs is saved correctly. Great. Okay, so we've got that's a basic way of getting a specification grid. In a few lines of code, we've been able to specify 96 models where we've gone, we're going to loop over the cohort, the follow-up, the cognitive ability variable measured, and the covariates that we're going to add to the regression. Thank you.